So let's take a look at what's new in H2R Graphics version 2.17. I have the application open here on the desktop. And the first thing I want to show you is if I quit the application, launch it again, you'll notice that both of these windows opened up again. So that's a nice little improvement. Now whenever you open Windows and then quit the app, when you relaunch the application, those same windows will open up just as you expect them to. This is early days and testing a little bit. So let me know if it's not working quite as you expect it to. Next new feature here is this new solid color graphic. So as you might expect, it shows a color and I can just treat it like any other graphic. And in fact, I can choose whatever color I want, of course, and uh, use that in the background of some other graphic. Maybe I just want to fill a screen with a color. You can use that for whatever you want, but now it's available in uh, the application. Next up, over on the variables page, we have three new text variables. Something that's been asked for a lot is more than three. So now there's up to six here, and you can also change these via companion or just enter in any text here you want and then use those on your graphics. So for example, if I say number six here in, uh, in the variable number six, if I can type, and then I can just copy this little text six, head back over to my rundown, and add maybe like a lower third. I can use that variable in my graphic. And if I go back over to my variables page, change this to be just number maybe, you can see it updates on the output. An important big change in this version is that the timer graphics have all been reworked. So if I type in time here, you'll see lots of options for time now. Um, you can see the classic ones, these legacy ones, the big timer and the time graphic. Those are the ones that existed before. But now I've split all of the graphics out in terms of what the timer actually does. And I've completely reworked them under the hood as well so that they should all work very differently, much more um, controllable and much more consistent as well. So for example here, I have this countdown timer graphic. And what I can do now is show that graphic on air, just as you would expect. And now the graphic itself doesn't start counting or anything like that. It just gets shown on air and I can use the controls here to start the timer. So I'm counting down from one minute. In fact, I can plus and minus time if I really want to. So I could add another minute onto that timer or re remove those minutes that I just added there. I can also jump in and edit it as well and make changes here. So for example, what I want it to look like, just like before, I can do like our, our minute, minute, second, second if I wanted to. I can also choose the duration. I can set a message just like I could before. Hello, and um, delete that. And then at the end, what do I want to happen? Do I want it to show the negative numbers? So as it counts past zero, should it show those? Should it hold on zero or should it reset the timer? The way I've set it up by default is just to show the negative numbers. So whenever it gets to zero, it'll keep counting down. Or for the other timers, maybe if it's counting up, you can choose what happens whenever the time runs out. But for instance here, I could set it to just hold on 00, zero. And then whenever the timer gets down to 000, zero, zero, it will just hold there at zero and not go any further into the negative. Other types of timers that have been reworked, like I said, they're all different now. So for example, the count up timer here, I can show that on air. And as you can see, it's six on zero. And then if I edit it, I can choose what time it starts at. So maybe if I'm doing like a football game, it starts at 45 minutes. And then whenever the time comes, I can show that graphic on air and then hit start and it just starts the timer. We'll count up and whenever I want to, I can also just pause that. So if for some reason the timer needs to be paused, I can hit pause and you can see there it just stopped and then I can keep going and uh, it'll keep counting up. You will notice that over on companion, you want to grab the latest beta version in order to uh, manipulate all these timers. You can do lots of stuff, start, stop, reset, add, plus minus time, all that good stuff. But you will need the latest beta of companion to do that. And a couple of nice improvements to the speaker timer graphic here. So I have that up here and I can say what happens on the end. So before you could show the speaker timer. In fact, let me just show that on output one. There you go, you can see the speaker timer. And I can take that down to maybe just like one minute timer and it's on air now. And then from there, I can just start counting down that timer. Again, these controls are outside. So I'm counting down that 60 second uh, timer there. And I can choose what happens at the end. Now before I could send a message to say, please wrap up and show and hide that. Please wrap up. 
work like that. But what I can choose now on the end is instead of going to the negative numbers, I can choose to show this message. So whenever it finally gets to um, zero, I can say, uh, yeah, you're done. You're done. Um, and then when it gets to zero, it will show that you're done message. And there you go. Final little graphic to show off here, I have my lower third animated and I had a few styles before but I've added one more style called stretch and that looks like this. It will stretch down, show the graphic and then when you sh hide it again it will uh, do the reverse of that. So it's a, like a full page, a little graphic that I can hide as well. I've also added lots of other improvements and fixes, you can check those out over on the website and let me know if you have any issues along the way. Thanks for watching, bye bye.